So there's a ton of work going on in AI right now. Everything is accelerating extremely fast and there's now becoming like a million ways to do everything. But I thought it'd be cool to make a like a short video just highlighting the coolest projects that I'm currently paying attention to in AI and why I'm paying attention to them. Let's start off with OpenAI. OpenAI are doing crazy things right now. They have become kind of more of a consumer focused product company than a, than a serious research company. That being said, they still have one of the most advanced models in the world. They've just released an update called GPT-40. It's faster, more intelligent. It can generate speech. It can understand images it can understand your voice all within the model itself so we used to just bolt like a text to, a speech to text system that would turn what you said as an audio file into text then we would give that to a large language model like gpt 3.5 chat gpt and we'd give that text to that it would generate some sort of text output and then we would use a third model to turn the mod the assistant's reply into audio again for you to hear it and then if you if you bolted all those systems together you'd get something like jarvis or siri or samantha from her OpenAI's new approach is just like create one big model that understands everything within its training data so it can do the conversion from speech to text inside of itself kind of crazy um it can then figure out what to say next and generate the audio output apparently through its own weight so it can speak and hear without being programmed to do that which i think is kind of crazy but it's super exciting if this is the case and i hope to see a bunch more open source research um in the future moving on quickly grok is by far the most exciting place to run open source models these are the ones they currently um offer at low latency the reason i love this company is because they are focused on one thing and one thing only and that is speed they don't use gpus they have their own proprietary hardware and they will run a model for you faster than anywhere else in the world can run it so this is llama 3 70b um to give you a uh, like so I'm going to clear the chat because there's two different outputs here to give you a good um, understanding of these two models, Llama 38B and Llama 370B. A 70B model would have to fit on probably like one very high end graphics card, GPU, um, or like maybe like eight to ten very sort of l smaller GPUs at a much slower speed. So when you take something like Llama 370B and you say, uh, hello, how are you? And you get 333 tokens per second. You basically reach instant outputs. And what this does is it brings the latency down to a ridiculously low number. And this now opens up things like maybe having an AI be in a call center on the phone to real humans, maybe having an AI making real time decisions for certain tasks untouched by a human in the loop um s latency actually gets in the way of a ton of use uh people don't like waiting around but also there are some situations where you cannot have latency and so the most exciting thing about grok right now is that they are fast the faster you are the more data you can throw at it so this is super exciting i recommend checking out grok they have an awesome api it's a, literally a hot swap for the open ai api so you can just do a pip install and just immediately start using grok which is awesome Okay, what else am I looking at? Llama 370B and Llama 38B have been out for about a month now. And this is really interesting. Llama 370B is competitively the largest, um, like most intelligent open source model right now that is really just hoovering up all of the projects that want to use the best model possible. Llama 370B is the most exciting. It seems to be the most capable. I don't know what they trained it on, but the data was clearly high quality. And so the outputs of this system are incredibly good. It has a really, really good attention mechanism. And that what that means is that when you give it an instruction, it follows that instruction extremely well. And that's what we found through our testing at Decade as well. So this is getting about 500,000 downloads a month. That makes sense, but it's not a huge number, but it is still quite a big number. The reason it makes sense is because no one can actually afford to run this thing in production if you're like a small business or a hobbyist. This is just too big. And so the more exciting thing is Llama 3.8B. This is something that is 
extremely intelligent, but extremely small. You can see this isn't getting nearly a million downloads a month because this is the obvious go-to for most hobbyists, for most small businesses, for most people who just want to tinker. They can download Llama 3 8B, get it running, get it generating tokens at like an okay speed. But once they've played with that, they can then deploy to production just with Grok, because Grok already has the 8B version, or they can upgrade to the 70B version. But if you run Llama 3 8B on Grok, you get something crazy. You get 900 tokens per second. To, for, for perspective, if I get a high-end um, M2 Max MacBook to run the 70B model, to run the 70B model, so that was 300 tokens a second, on a high-end MacBook, it'll run at about 15 tokens per second. Um, if I want to run it on a high-end, single high-end GPU, an A100, 70B, you'll get about 30, 30 tokens per second. Getting 300, which was the number before, getting 300 is insane. So if you want low speeds, Grok is the one. Moving on, smaller models, the Phi 3 family is by far the best small family of models right now. They just updated, they just brought out um, a much lar lar larger context length, they just brought out a vision model that can see and understand images, um, which is getting a ton of downloads, and they just brought out a slightly larger Phi 3 medium um, with different context lengths as well. So this is really exciting. The cool thing about this is that it's so small that you can run it on the edge. You can run it on a phone, you can run it on a, on a laptop, you can run it in many places extremely quickly. Um, another project that I'm expecting to get updates pretty quickly is the Lava project. Lava has been taking Llama models and fine tuning them to understand images for a while now. Turns out you can just tokenize images in the same way you do with text and you can fine tune then fine tune a model to understand both the image tokens and the text tokens. So you can kind of retrofit a language model to understand images. I find this really interesting and a bunch of other people do, which brings me to Moondream, personally my favorite small project. Moondream aims to be the ultimate edge vision language model. It can see images incredibly well, it can see text incredibly well, it can reason about images. Um, and what's really nice, something that I've been using it for, is like repeated question answering um, on images. So if you wanted to put maybe a camera stream through this model, you could have it answer all of these questions really quickly. So you could say, here's, here's an example, you can say describe it in detail and it'll give you a description, but then you can ask it extremely specific questions. Is she loitering? Is she taking anything? Is the person shopping? What is she shopping for? That kind of thing is really, really helpful, especially when you're running on an edge device that doesn't have much compute. And when I say edge device, this will run on a phone quite slow, but not so slow that you can't use it. It will also run um, on a on like a MacBook, it'll run on a laptop, it'll run really anywhere. And that's the cool thing about this. It'll even run on a Pi, on a Raspberry Pi. It will be slow on a Raspberry Pi, but it is possible. Moving on, last one, Parler TTS. So we all know that the text-to-speech giant um, for open source, Coqui, um, unfortunately shut down. After many years of doing some awesome research, they have built the coolest GitHub repos ever. They have TTS. They have literally pip install TTS installs this. This is a legendary GitHub repo that is unfortunately no longer under maintenance, is no longer being looked after, um, but it contributed a ton to the world of text-to-speech, of getting computers to talk. They put a lot of state-of-the-art papers into this one repo, coded it up, documented it, and built an awesome community around it. Thank you, Kokui. But it looks like Hugging Face are trying to take the best of what is new and put it into something that is a little bit more Hugging Face flavored. So this is Parler TTS, um, and they're going a different direction with text-to-speech. Instead of having a sample piece of audio that you can use to clone someone's voice, Parler TTS just uses prompt. So you can describe the voice you want, and it will then generate that voice for you. The cool thing about this is it's extremely small and it's fully open source. So it's low latency, you can put it anywhere. Um, how big is it? 
Yeah, it's like three gigabytes. It's tiny. Um, they are still working on it. It's extremely new. They haven't got consistent voices yet. Like this is something that I am just only just watching on the sidelines, ready to jump on it when it's a little bit further along. Also, this is a preview of the larger model that they are planning on releasing. So I think they are 10xing the audio data set. I think it's 10x um, over the, so it's trained on 10.5 thousand hours of audio. Um, and they are planning on upgrading to more at some point. I can't remember what the exact number was, but for text-to-speech, getting computers to talk outside of the language models weights, Parler TTS seems to be the just, it's about to pop. So I'm super excited for this. I can't wait for the full release. It's a great preview. Let's keep going. So there you go. There are the things that I'm really interested in at the moment. If you're looking to get into AI, definitely hit the subscribe button. I hope you got some value out of this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.